shape our industry, the technologies we provide. So what's going to be next? Well, let's ask somebody who should know what's going to be next. Please join me in welcoming Vivek Singh to the stage, Intel Fellow and Director of Computational Lithography at Intel. Thank you very much, Anna. Magna Carta and uh, more so in the same uh, sentence. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I want to begin by uh, saying how incredibly humbled I am to have been asked to speak at the 50th anniversary of Moore's Law. When I got the invitation and before I had figured out what I'm going to say, I walked over to my colleague, Intel Senior Fellow Mark Bohr, a wiser man, and said, Mark, uh, you know, I've been asked to give this talk. I feel like I should be talking about something more than my own area. I feel like I'm representing much, much more. Uh, and he completed my sentence for me. He said, God, you're representing God. Talk about tall order. But here I am in any case, representing Gordon, and asked to talk about vision. Well, vision is a heady thing. It's a rather heavy word. And, um, you know, when the man himself was asked uh, to describe his vision recently by Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, uh, you know, when asked to say, what does the future hold? What have you learned? This is what he had to say. Uh, he says, I guess one thing I've learned is once you've made a successful prediction, avoid making another one. <laughs> he said this a month ago. So I'm going to avoid making any wild predictions, but I am going to talk about uh, two things. One, what does the world want? Why does the world want Moore's Law to continue? And why do I believe it can? Okay. Uh, in the world ahead, uh, people want to be connected to a world of opportunity. People want access. And our job as technologists is to uh, provide technology of the latest kind to uh, not just people in developed countries, but in developing ones. People want uh, connectivity of the broadband kind. People want education. A lot of problems in the world today can be traced to the fact that uh, lots of children, especially girls, don't have access to even elementary education. Uh, and finally, people want healthcare. Uh, it's a pity that even in the 21st century, large swaths of the world's population don't have access to uh, you know, even elementary basic healthcare. And I think it's our job as technologists, I really do believe, uh, our job is to provide education uh, to improve the quality of both uh, teaching and learning, and our job is to deliver innovative healthcare solutions uh, to remote parts of the world. That is what I, why I believe we actually exist. That is why I believe we do this thing. And I further believe that to do all of this, uh, requires more so. Why is that? What's the connection between providing opportunity in the world ahead to uh, remote parts of the world and more so? Well, to illustrate that, let's take a look at this chart which plots the transistor leakage current against the transistor performance. That's a classical way of uh, showing the goodness of our transistors. And each of those curves is actually a line, a node on Moore's law. 65 nanometers, 45, 32, 22, and now finally 14 nanometer. Now, whether you're making smartphones or laptops or are building server farms to crunch big data, all you have to do is to situate yourself at the appropriate point along this latest technology curve and milk the benefits of Moore's Law. You're going to be able to either do the same thing that was done two years ago for much less power or for the same functionality, your battery is going to last a whole lot longer. Okay? And that's exactly what the world wants. Now, the big question these days is, can we continue to do this, right? Uh, now, there has been no dearth of naysayers, right? This is a collection of industry comments over the past 30 years. I won't read all of them, but here are a few just to remind you. Uh, our memories can be short. Optical lithography will reach its limit at uh, 500 nanometers. X-ray lithography will be needed below one microns. Uh, copper interconnection will never work, and scaling will end in 10 years. And that was it 20 years ago. 
So today, things don't look any different. Our obstacles don't look any more insurmountable. And while people have been doing this business of naysaying, uh, the world has quietly been continuing along the path of Moore's Law. This is a picture of the 14 nanometer technology juxtaposed against the 22 nanometer technology. And you can see that we now have pictures of 52 nanometers as opposed to 80 nanometers. And if you do the math, you'll find that we actually not only have continued Moore's Law, we've given the world a little better than normal 2x scale, right? So Moore's Law has continued, right? Uh, now, we don't make things smaller because we are dogmatic about Moore's Law because, uh, you know, Gordon was a founder. We do it because it provides real product benefits. On this slide, you see uh, uh, two different uh, pictures of the, die, of the die. One is the Haswell die at 22 nanometers. The other one is the Broadwell die uh, at 14 nanometers. And you can see that Broadwell gives you 35% more transistors while being 37% smaller. In other words, it delivers a 2.2x increase in transistor density. By the way, it also gives you up to 40% better 3D graphics performance. And uh, the power usage there enables really thin fanless devices. That's what the world wants, right? Now, 